Afternoon, everybody. The next lightning talk we'll hear is uh, on the topic of Prometheus, a next generation monitoring system uh, by Brian Brazel. Hello. Nice. Hear me okay? Can you, can everyone hear me in the back? Recording's okay? Grand. It's nice to know. If you want to try out Prometheus, we have actually live stats from FOSDEM are up at that URL. So we've been using this all weekend. I've been stuck in the knock. Uh, but anyway, here to talk about Prometheus, which I'm going to claim is a next generation monitoring system. So, so from background, I was at Google. I was there for seven years. Did a ton of monitoring. I've been contributing to open source for like 15 years. Um, and I currently care about monitoring in large systems at scale. And building a company doing commercial support around Prometheus. So at the basic setup, why do we monitor? And there are basically four reasons. One is we want to know when things go wrong and they're causing a business problem, hopefully a little bit before so we can prevent it and customers don't notice. When something does go wrong, we want to be able to look at it and you know, kind of fix it and figure out what's going on. When we're making design decisions and technical decisions like capacity planning, we want to know, OK, 90% of the queries are going to cash and it's staying that way so we can plan out and like, save money. And also, sometimes we're going to hook it into automation, like, you know, that rack switch has failed, we need to fix it or other processes like that. So where does Prometheus come from? So Prometheus, uh, its design is based on something called Borgmon by Google. Um, and it was started in 2012 by ex-Googlers, because ex-Googlers, when they leave Google, they start recreating Google technology. It's what they do. Even Googlers are using it. Uh, it publicly launched only a year ago, uh, just earlier this week. Um, and it's going pretty nicely. And it's no one company does it. Like, I do not work for SoundCloud, to be clear. I have never worked for SoundCloud. It's a common confusion. And there's the link again. So in terms of community, as I said, we publicly launched about a year ago. Uh, before that, there was like two years of like, in the quiet development. So at the moment, there's 22 core uh, repositories. We've had over 250 distinct contributors inside the last year. Or to put it, and we've got 35 third-party integrations, not just the 10 we do ourselves. So that means that every month, we are getting three new integrations to new systems like MySQL or CouchDB or RabbitMQ, and 20 new contributors a month which sounds to me like a pretty he healthy open source project. I mean, know there's over 100 companies using this, including some big names you can see on our website, and some ones we can't mention, but are also pretty big. So the thesis here is that Prometheus is an extra monitoring system. So I'd like to talk about three things in this talk today. One of them is the instrumentation clients. Another is our data model and querying. And the third aspect is manageability and reliability. Oh. So a lot of monitoring today is done that we're just looking at the outside of our systems. We're just saying, that, hey, there's these requests going in, or hey, it's turned on. Just a simple, yep, I can get into that port. It's basic. It works if you've got a few machines. But if you've got a big complex system with internals and subsystems, and they're talking to other systems in the microservice architecture, you want to know where everything's going. And you don't talk, want to talk about machines. I don't care about the machine that is running MySQL. I care about the MySQL service that's running on these end machines. Let's think about those. Let's aggregate it. Let's think about it that way. So that's the idea I want to put forward in when you're doing monitoring. So we've got a lot of open source developers here, right? And a lot of you, anyone who's playing anything that classifies as a server, you want to produce some instrumentation. And then you have a bit of a challenge. How are you going to go about that? And you have lots of things, let's say, HAProxy, which has a custom uh, endpoint in CSV or JSON you can hit, and you can parse that. And they've had to write their own instrumentation code. You've got some systems that use JMX, so like Cassandra by DropWizard, Kafka, Zookeeper. Um, they use JMX. JMX is not particularly standard. It's like saying USB is a standard, but they still have to figure out how to get disks working. Different problem. And some libraries, like, say, Asianix, which is Netflix library for Cassandra, there's a whole pile of hooks you can hook an instrumentation system. Um, and some systems just don't do monitoring at all. There's no instrumentation provided. And this is just not great. It means that you, as an open source developer, you have to choose one of these, and your users are going to ask for more of them. As a user, well, you've got all these different things that are, that are instrumented in different ways, and you have to support them all, and potentially have to run end monitoring systems or put in shims. Me, as the developer of a monitoring system, I have to support all these different things out there. Like I said, we have like what, 37 integrations. That's just third party integrations, so about 50 total in Prometheus. This sucks for everyone, for users, for open source developers, and for monitoring system developers. So what I'm going to propose is that we actually use Prometheus for some of this. Because Prometheus is not a closed open ecosystem. It's an open ecosystem. If you instrument Prometheus, 
your data is not trapped in Prometheus. It can get outside. So if you're using the Python or Java clients, it is actually slightly easier to get your data into Graphite than it is to Prometheus. It's slightly fewer lines of code, um, just because that's the way Java works. Um, but it also means using the library author, you can just instrument once with Prometheus, and then up to your users to get it out into Graphite or InfluxDB or whatever you want. And this can be done incrementally. There's no need for a big bang change. You can just gradually migrate things over from whatever you're using now to your Prometheus client library. And it goes the other way, too, because we can get data in. We can pull data in from Graphite. We can pull data in from Collecti. We can pull data in from JMX, SNMP, a whole pile of stuff, which means you can use Prometheus as a clearinghouse. And one example of this is Zalando Zedmon. It is using the Prometheus client libraries to parse uh, Prometheus instrumentation in C Advisor, I think it is, and go into their system. No Prometheus involved there at all. So that's the way they've been able to take advantage of the fact that C Advisor has Prometheus instrumentation and just hook right into it. And the other thing is that, OK, it's nice to say, yeah, we've got a clearinghouse, but also we worry about making instrumentation easy. Our client libraries that you instrument with aren't just about marshalling. They're also about actual instrumentation. They care of all the bookkeeping, the state management, the concurrency, and we've optimized all that. Like in the Java client, you're talking, what, 15 nanoseconds under load, like under like eight treads concurrently to increment. That's nothing. You can do 100,000 of those a second without having to care. And that's great for getting great instrumentation. And of course, we, when we can, we take advantage of the libraries. So in Python, we can use context managers and decorators. This is all that's required to time how long a function takes. One thing to create it, there's always a help string, and then just a decorator. Simple. This is as simple as we can make it because you should focus on just adding instrumentation, lifting all your code base, and not to worry about all the bookkeeping. Uh, the second part I like to talk about is the actual query language and the data model. So there's a lot of systems, like say Graphite, where it's a dotted string and there's an implicit hierarchy. If you want to do anything other than that hierarchy, it's messy. You have to use globs and regexes. And if you're really lucky, there's no dots in your actual data, which you then have to you know, use regexes on. That could get fun today already with um, the network, because the building names have different numbers of hyphens in them for the, AP, for the access point names. Great fun. Uh, Prometheus, on the other hand, it's all key value pairs. So like if we take metric, Fosnum, Brussels, instead metric, well, the event is Fosnum and the city is Brussels. You can slice and dice any way you want on that. And furthermore, this can come from instrumentation, like it could be a HTTP method name or a path or anything, or based on the service you're monitoring. Like, hey, this is data center X. This is environment canary. You can, do, you can slice and dice. So there's control as an instrumentation, as a developer, and it's control as a system administrator as well. You can choose how to lay this out. So here's an example. We've got the node exports to the machine stats, We've got the device, instance, and the jobs. We can look at all these stuff. The other thing is that, as I said, it's easy to add them. Here's, if I want to request measure them Python, that's all you need to do. Slightly more code. Like, those extra 20 bytes aren't going to hurt you. The other thing is, OK, we've got all this data. It's a nicer data model. What can I do with it? Well, anything. So if you want to do things like, give me the top 5% of machines in the cluster, go ahead. If you want to say, what will the disks, how full will the disks be in four hours, and alert on that, you can. Because static thresholds, when I get 95% on disk, don't work. Because either it's like, actually, this is like a two petabyte disk. 95% full means you've got a ton of space to use. Or it feels really fast to mess up with you. If you can predict, say, hey, four hours in advance, will it be full? Much better to do. So the other thing is the alerting is the exact same as the query language. There's no distinction between graphing and alerting. So if you can graph it, you can alert it. And then you can go out to PagerDuty, OpsGenie, email. And there's an integration there as well, because of an open system, to JSON that you can do whatever you want with it. So here's an example of the top five Docker images by CPU, just count it up, sum it, get the top. Very powerful language. How powerful? It's Turing complete. So if you actually take that link, it's on demo.rustreception.io. There is a working Conway's life. Do not do this in production, OK? It's just an example that the language is powerful. Don't do this in production. So the third aspect I'd like to talk about is the manageability and reliability of the system. Because at the end of the day, someone has to run this. OK? And that's annoying if you've got a badly designed system. So Prometheus follows the Unix philosophy. We have many components. Each of them do one thing, and they do it darn well. We aren't a monolithic thing. It's all spread out. And this means as well that if one component fails, it's not the end of the world, because you can run a second one in a replica. It's much easier to manage. Also, you should deploy it once you get bigger and bigger. And there aren't any other dependencies. The only thing Prometheus needs to work 
is a local disk, preferably a SSD, and network access. There's no Zookeeper or other consensus systems, because the last thing you need in an emergency when your network's falling apart is, oh yeah, Zookeeper's down, we've lost consensus, our monitoring's broken. That's not what you want. The time when it's most important to have that sort of monitoring is you know, when your network's falling apart. So Prometheus is designed to still work in those situations with things you can rely upon. So here's the general architecture. So we've got the Prometheus server with local storage using a custom format, which is quite efficient. We've got from that, you use Grafana DDAs, that's where the link's to. It's got an alert manager, so multiple Prometheus servers go to an alert manager and automatically deduplicate. So it's very easy to do with HA. You just run two of them, point to an alert manager, off you go, and it can just pull from all the libraries. And there's a JSON interface here, you can get out all the data. Like all the graphs work just by making JSON requests. So once again, fully open, easy to get data in and out. So it is a pull model. Okay, I was expecting some boos there. Uh, this turns out to be surprisingly contentious. Uh, as far as you use pull or push. It turns out pull's slightly better, but it does, you know, overall, it's not a big deal, but it does have some benefits. It means you can have multiple Prometheus servers and it's easy to have replication. It means if I want to test something out in my workstation, I just turn over Prometheus and it hits the same endpoints. Easy for development and testing. You've got service discovery to find all your nodes because you should know where they're all otherwise. So you support EC2, Marathon, Mesos, console. And it's also state-based. So if we, if the network has a blip, because network blips happen, it's going to lose resolution, but it doesn't lose data. So if there's a big spike there, if you're spending like every 60 seconds and you miss one of those, you might miss the spike. But at least for me, you'll see, hey, there's a bit of a hump there. So that's better. <laughs> it is efficient. It is best in class for efficiency. There's other systems like, uh, I think Facebook's Gorilla is basically uses the same algorithms, uh, double delta encoding. So it's about 3.5, maybe 4.5. And a single server, we've actually had latest stats, a single server can handle half a million samples per second and millions of metrics, which, depending on what you're doing, could be you know, 10,000 servers you can be monitoring your stats on, on a single machine. No problem. So this, you know, that's pretty easy to run. That's going to handle you. You don't need to do fancy stuff unless you're really, really big. And it is scalable. And it's because it's so easy to run as well, you just give them one to each team. And the chances of them hitting a point where they need half a million metrics per second is pretty darn low. And you can use federation to pull from all of these. And if you do have something which, can, which you're going to need more than half a million samples per second, there is ways to do that with starting a federation. But to be honest, there's probably like five people in the world who need it because Prometheus is so efficient. And there's also lots of little details we care about to make your life easier. So these are really small things. We have a wiki page which lists all the port numbers of all the exporters, the integrations. Just so if you're testing out two of them, the ports don't clash. Really small detail makes your life easier. We've got other things as well. SIG hop and SIG term work is expected. So many binaries don't get that right. And the list, there's some regex stuff as well, because sysadmins, no regexes, other people, it varies. So as I said, I've talked about instrumentation. I've talked about the power of the query language. I've talked about how you make management reliable. There's lots of other stuff, dashboards, even integration. Like most of our integrations appeared without us knowing about it, without any intervention from the core team. That's how easy it is to integrate with it. And just like lots of docs as well. So here's a pile of resources. That's from my clicker. Yes, so apparently it's a B. Uh, so here's the links once again. That's the link to see what's going on in the FOSDEM network. This one's up all the time. I'll probably turn that off tomorrow. Uh, but here's the main docs as well. Thank you. I think we have a minute and a half for questions. So I might get one or two in. Uh, one there. Oh, That's it. Um, when do you have plans for distributed evaluation? So if you want to have like a hierarchy of Prometheus servers and have like a global that aggregates or whatever? Uh, so as far as I know, that's in my head. I, it might come as part of long-term storage because we consider Prometheus itself not to be for durable storage because that's a really, really hard problem. We'd like to hand that off to something like OpenTSDB. I think as part of that, at least the way I'm thinking, that will just come with it because it'll be the same API. But once again, this is something you'd have to have a massive setup to justify. Oh, there's another one over there. There's some. Yeah, yeah this is. Uh, thank you for a very nice talk, by the way. Um, this is somewhat related. Um, uh, what's the status of long term storage? Yeah, ho hopefully someday we will find some piece of software that is capable of doing durable long term storage <laughs> in reliable fashion. We, we would really like not to have to implement it ourselves because it's a really hard problem. And if we can get someone else like InfluxDB or OpenTSDB to do it for us, that'll be great. Worst case, we'll implement it ourselves. 
Like the API is not difficult, it's just finding its problems like OpenCSDB has a limit of eight labels. InfluxDB, you know, we're not sure we can handle the load yet. You know, it's still maturing. They're, they've obviously just rewritten their storage engine, should be a lot better. Uh, but that's the sort of things we're hoping basically that someone else will implement it for us and we can just rely on that. Cool. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Also another extra uh, answer to that question, we have been making some vague plans of being able to use any external key value store as a, as a long-term storage uh, because we can just treat the key value store as a, uh, as a metric file. Uh, so we, it's kind of, ideas are popping. We want to have like some more flushed out uh, like plans by the end, end, by the first half of this year so we can actually start implementing long-term storage. Yeah, the, the trick really with long-term storage is reading the data back. Writing it out is pretty trivial. Cool. Thank you. Thank you very much, yeah. Okay, 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 great.